Hello everyone, this is Sung Kim. In this video, we're going to look at how graft material appears in CBCT scan after extraction and potential anatomic considerations that you should pay close attention to, especially if you're doing an implant treatment plan in the premolar region. So go ahead and take a look at this periapical radiograph. It's clear to all of us that there is a large carious lesion involving tooth number 20. Not to mention there is a lesion uh, involving number 19 as well as number eight, uh, 18. But yes, so this is a large lesion which appears to extend into the pulpal chamber and the pulpal space. And possibly we are seeing a uh, minimally widened or widened PDL space at the apex. So this was taken in um, let's see, <coughs> 2018, and if we look at the bite wing that was taken in March of 2019, you can still see that this tooth is largely decayed and no treatment has been rendered uh, since the initial radiograph taken in 2018. <coughs> and so this is the last or the latest radiograph or periapical or bite wing radiograph that I have. So again, this was taken in uh, March of 2019 and my presumption is that it was subsequently extracted uh, in immediately after this radiograph. Also you can see that the tooth number 19 has received MOD restoration since then. So now I'm going to show you a Comim CT scan of this area after it has been extracted so here we have Comim CT scan. This is the coronal view. And here is the axial view. And here is the sagittal view. So just looking at from the axial view, we can see that this tooth is missing, which is number 20, and it's ob easily seen in this 3D rendering view and immediately you realize that there is a mental foramen that's exiting right at this location of the planned implant site which again if I could go back to the radiograph the periapical radiograph that I initially showed you Well, this one's barely capturing or is missing the root apex. Mm, let's see which one was the... So there you go. So here, again, once again, we barely capture the apex of the tooth. Um, let's see. Yeah, there you go. And it's very difficult to visualize where the mental foramen is, but it's very clear in this 3D rendering. And another thing that I want you to pay close attention to is how graft material appears after the um, grafting has been done. So one thing you'll realize is that this bone density here looks somewhat different from the rest of the residual ridge. It looks granular, uh, it has heterogeneous radial opacity to it, um, and uh, let's see if we we might be able to see this some fragments of potential potentially bony or graft materials along the alveolar crest. So when you have this type of appearance, that tells me that this site has been grafted, and thankfully it has been healed well because uh, the graft material is blending into the surrounding trabecular and cortical bone. So the surgery uh, went great in this case, but once again, this is the um, anatomic information that we could not previously obtain from two-dimensional image. So here is the patient's left mental foramen exiting through the buccal cortex, and that can be seen in this axial view as well. Again, let's verify that in the sagittal view. So here we go, that's the mental foramen, and as I slide, scroll through the volume, we can visualize mandibular canal. <coughs> um, 
Another thing that I want you to see is as I move my coronal planes distally, I want you to pay close attention to the overall morphology of the lingual cortical plane. So here I'm at the side of number 20 and I'm scrolling distally. Immediately you're starting to see a very pronounced lingual concavity. Here's number 19 and distal root of 19 and here's 18. Do you see that the width, buccolingual width of this ridge here is about the half the thickness of the overall buccolingual width observed at the alveolar crest? So that is something um, we need to pay very close attention to if you're planning on doing a dental implant. Obviously, clinically or intraorally, you can only measure or perceive the width of this residual ridge or the alveolar process, and we won't be able to know how thin this uh, alveolar mandib excuse me alveolar process or the body of the mandible gets. So this is a very very important information should you do an implant in this area. Obviously, that's not the case for this patient, but nevertheless, that's a very important feature that we uh, need to recognize. So now I want to show you cross-sectional image. So here we have axial view. I have already drawn my focal trough roughly in the shape of the mandible. And here's the reconstructed, um, reconstructed panoramic radiograph with the tracing of the mandibular canal. And here we have cross-sectional images. So here I can use my ruler to measure the width as well as the height of the ridge. If I measure it right um, just above the mandibular canal, I may get 15.04, uh, but if I want to measure conservatively, knowing that this is the opening of the mental foramen, now the height becomes only 9, excuse me, 8.93 millimeter. Well, let's give it another try here. So this cross sections are uh, produced using one millimeter interval. And um, a lot of uh, my residents prefer to see one millimeter interval slices. So there you go, you have it. And lastly, I want to show you 3D rendering. Um, eventually side and these red lines represent some of the measurements that I have made previously and let's go ahead and take a look at the lingual side. So I hope you can see that there's a very prominent submandibular gland fossa or you can generalize it and call it lingual undercut. This is particularly pronounced in the area of number 18 and number 19 and slightly extending into the side of number 20. So yes, so this is very important feature that we must recognize. And another name for this portion, which um, forms the superior border of the submandibular gland fossa or lingual undercut, is the internal oblique ridge or mylohyde ridge. And this is where the mylohyde muscle attaches to. So okay guys, I hope that was uh, informational and um, fun and hope you learned something from this video and I will see you again in the next video. Thank you for listening and take care.